Hey, if you listen to this podcast, I think you will also love my newsletter, Elevar Gazette. I talk a lot about elevating your professional and your personal lives. Make sure to subscribe to my newsletter. Go to anushakhanan.com slash email list, and I'm sure you will love it. Join everyone who is like-minded, and now let's get into the episode. Hey, before we dive into this week's episode, if you've been enjoying the show, I'd love your support. Take just 10 seconds to rate and review us on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback helps others discover the wisdom and inspiration that I share on the Pivot to Balance podcast. Let's build a community of balance seekers together. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget to share the love. Now let's dive into the episode. Alan, welcome to the Pivot to Balance podcast. I'm your host, AK, and I hope you're doing well. In a world that pulls us in a million different directions and with a billion distractions, finding balance can feel like an ambiguous quest. Join me on this podcast as I try to navigate life's twists and turns with mindfulness, purpose, and grace. In each episode, we will dive into topics like self-care, personal growth, mindset shifts by sharing practical insights, stories, and maybe even interviews. Get ready to pivot to recalibrate and find your balance. Follow the Pivot to Balance podcast and I will see you on the other side. Hello, everyone. It has been, what, about two months since I've been on this podcast. I am, I don't even have any words. I have... Like I've been saying in the last couple of episodes, I don't want to record episodes when I don't feel like I'm doing justice to what the podcast is about, like balancing lives. And like I said, I think I've repeated this in so many episodes. 2024 is not my year. I've not been feeling it. But recently, I've been on a journey and that's what I want to talk about in this episode. I feel like I am kind of not in a zone where I can record podcasts every other week or every week. So if you've not checked out my website on ashakhanan.com, you can, you would you be able to see a banner which says that the Pivot to Balance podcast will be recording and publishing episodes every month until October. So yeah, so recently I've been on a journey pivoting from my previous full-time role towards a more marketing analytics focused career. If you're not following me on LinkedIn, you probably wouldn't have seen this. This transition has led me to reflect deeply on what it means to be the best version of myself. And I think it's something we all think about, isn't it? And that's what I want to talk about in today's episode. It's going to be a very broad catch-up session, but also talk about this whole idea of becoming the best version of ourselves. So like I said, we all have this thing where we want to become the best version of ourselves, right? We have this vision for a future self someone who has achieved certain milestones, acquired specific skills, has this great relationship or reached a level of success that we aspire to be, we aspire to. But here's the thing, right? Why do we feel like we need to achieve something specific to deserve to be our best selves? Why do we often think, oh, one day when I do these things, I'll finally be that person? Why not now? Why not think that you're already that person? This concept challenges our traditional perception of time. So we usually think of the past, present, and the future as distinct and separate, right? But what if they aren't as linear as we believe it to be? So in brain science, the concept of neuroplasticity shows us that our brains are constantly changing and adapting. So this means that our identities are not fixed. So we have the power to reshape our brains and by extension, our lives at any moment. Just think about this for a second. Our brains are constantly adapting and changing. Our identities are not fixed. We have the power to reshape our minds, which means we have the power to change our lives. So the brain doesn't distinguish between our current self, like quote unquote, current self, and quote-unquote future self as rigidly as we might think. So we look at the future and we're like, oh, that person, when I do X, Y, and Z, is going to be so successful, is going to look crazy hot, is going to do all of these things that I want to do. It's like we're separating us, like right now, the person that we are, from that person. But our brain doesn't know that. Our brain's going to think, oh, that's another, that's another person, it's not you. Like you're talking about someone else. But in reality, you're talking about yourself, but in the future state. So you're literally visualizing that you're not that person, even though you want it to be you. 
So by visualizing and sort of embodying the best version of ourselves right now, we can start rewiring our brains to kind of a, to kind of like align with that identity. So when you start showing up as the person that you want to be, which is why they say, right, like fake it till you make it, because you're kind of tricking your brain into believing that you have already become that person that you want to be. And then there's quantum physics. So some interpretations suggest that time might not be linear. Like I said, the past, present, future is not as distinct and separate. It could maybe even be intertwined in ways we don't fully understand. Like the concept of deja vu comes into play here, right? This means that the future version, the best future version of yourself, like of ourselves, could already exist in some form, just waiting to be realized. You could wake up for, say, three months at 5 a.m. and stop calling yourself as this person that wakes up at 5 a.m. I usually tell people that I wake up at 3.55, which is so crazy because people ask me, why is it 3.55, why not 4? But I don't know, it's because I set my alarm at 3.55, I kind of tell people that. But there are days when I don't do that. But I still call myself as someone that wakes up at 4 a.m. because I want to identify myself as someone who wakes up at 4 a.m. And my, my brain kind of forces me to do that. Even if I'm going to go back to sleep, my brain's like, you said you told people that you wake up at 4 a.m. and you're sleeping like a pig, wake up. I like that. I like that it does that. Can you see how my brain is forcing me to believe that I'm this person? Even if I don't want to be that person, I truly want to be, but I'm just saying, for example, even if I don't want to be, my brain still wakes me up at 4 a.m. regardless. So why wait? Why can't we just take the idea that you're already your best self, act as if you are that person now, and let your brain, and if you believe in like God, universe, whatever, let that catch up to this reality. I'm going to tell you six things that you can do and something that I'm going to try going forward. I mean, I actually am going to try because I'm tired of this. I'm tired of not being my best version. So the first thing is set clear intentions. Define what being your best version, best self means to you. Is it about being more confident? Is it about being more compassionate? Is it about being more, you know, if you want to achieve specific career goals, you want to be a certain person in your relationships. Clarity will help you align your actions with this vision. The second thing is adapt or adopt a growth mindset. And I've talked about this so many times. Anytime you're challenged, anytime you have a setback, be like, this is great. Character development. Like, like it's a joke right now. It is like you, can, you can see on memes where people are saying, Anything that bad happens to you is just like character development period. Like, yes, thank you. Like now I'm going to be a better version of myself. That's, that's amazing. Take that as opportunities to learn and grow. This mindset shift can transform anything, anything life throws at you into stepping, to into stepping stones toward your best self. The third thing is surround yourself with positivity. Just talk to people, engage with content. Be in environments that uplift you and inspire you. This has kind of been the theme of 2024 for me. Engaging with people, content, and being in environments that make you your best version. I cannot stress the importance of this. If you are surrounded by people that uplift you, if you are able to consume content that makes you feel like, yes, I can do this. I am that person. I'm going to be that person. If it makes you feel like that and your environment if it makes you feel like I can do literally anything I want, I just have to get up and do it. You have no idea how grateful you're supposed to be. Honestly, like that is really important. And you won't know unless you're put in a situation that, that forces you to realize that. Positive influences can reinforce your belief in your best self and provide the support that you need to stay on track. So being in places where you see everybody running you're going to feel like, am I the only one that's not running? Like, seriously, am I the only one that's not preparing for a marathon this year? Because I have been consuming content where people are just running. And that makes me feel like maybe I should run too. And I swear, like, I, I totally believe, especially on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, like, wherever you consume content, I'm full of people that don't align with the person that you want to be. Like, friendships don't have to be about being connected on Instagram or TikTok. Like, you don't have to care about that. Like, I, I will get to know you when I see you in person or when we talk on call or whatever. You don't have to be updated or stay updated with anyone's lives. But that's just my, that's just my perspective, right? Like, follow people that inspire you. Follow people that constantly make you think, like, why am I watching this? Why can't I just get up and do the thing that they're doing? The fourth thing is take small but consistent actions. 
Like, like I said, unfollow people that don't resonate with the person that you want to be. Small, but it's it's a consistent thing because you unfollow them. Get up every single day at the same time. Small, but consistent. Progress, no matter how small, builds momentum and confidence. No matter what happens, I try and be very consistent with my other podcast. That is because I'm, I surround myself with things that inspire me to create content there. But that's not the same for this podcast. As you can see, as you went up, you can you can literally see I'm building everything in public. You can see that. You can see how interdependent these things are. The fifth thing is practice self-compassion. I think throughout this journey of 2024, I have not been self-compassionate. Like I've, it might seem like it, but I'm not. And I've also seen friends that are not really self-compassionate. They blame themselves for everything. But I think it's so easy to not do that. So be kind to yourself, whatever, regardless of what path you're on. Recognize that growth is a process and it's okay to have moments of doubt. But when you're really confident, when you have self-compassion, it fuels resilience and perseverance. The sixth thing and the last thing is celebrate wins. I am terrible at this. I don't care what I've done. I'd still like brush right past it and I'd be like, well, I was supposed to do this. It's not really that big of a deal. But guess what? It is a big of a deal. It is. It's okay to celebrate yourself, no matter how minor they may seem, because celebrating wins can kind of remind you like, oh my God, I actually did what I said I was going to do. And it will motivate you to keep going forward. I talked a lot about this on my newsletter as well. So like I said, go ahead, subscribe to my newsletter, Elevar Gazette. Visit anushaklan.com slash email list. You'll be able to subscribe there. Remember, the power comes from your best self, which lies within you right now. To start today and watch how your reality begins to transform. So before we wrap up, here's a quote that perfectly encapsulates today's focus. Do not wait. The time will never be just right. Start where you stand and work with whatever tools you may have at your command and better tools will be found as you go along. This was said by Napoleon Hill. I am incredibly grateful for all you balance seekers listening to this podcast because I have had messages from a lot of people asking where the hell are you like where are the episodes and i'm just eternally grateful for that because i think this is one of my biggest passion projects that i started and i really appreciate you sticking around and continuing to listen to the podcast i hope you found this episode actionable inspiring um if you enjoyed this episode please share it with your friends and family don't forget to follow don't forget to subscribe if you're listening to this on youtube and until next time remember the best version of you is you start becoming that person today. So I'll see you next month. Go grab a cup of lemon water and I'll see you in the next episode.